Gordon Corman's Restart, Chapter 21, Chase Ambrose. It should be familiar to me, sitting on the chairs outside Dr. Fitzwallace's office with Aaron and Bear waiting for the axe to fall. Aaron assures me that our butt prints are permanently etched into the seats. I don't remember any of that, but it's accepted fact that the three of us have spent a lot of time here. Aaron settles him comfor- himself comfortably and grins at me. There's no place like home. I'm not in the mood to grin back. Are you both crazy? What was all that supposed to be about? Bear rolls his eyes. Oh, boo-hoo, the poor geek squad. I'm furious. Forget them. What about me? You've just gotten me in a ton of trouble. What about yourselves? You're both going to get kicked off the football team for this. And for what? So you could spray fire extinguisher foam on a bunch of band instruments? Bear keeps on smiling. At least we weren't the ones who conked Joel Weber. That was an accident. You think Fitzwallace is going to believe that, Bear retorts? Who's going to back you up? Your video dweebs? I kind of doubt you're their favorite person right now. I'm so upset I can barely come up with the right words. You did this on purpose to frame me. We're supposed to be friends. And you were so dead set on wrecking my life that you didn't even care if you went down the drain with me. Aaron's calm. No one's going down the drain. Are you delusional or just stupid? With our reputation, they're going to throw the kitchen sink at us. Community service is something we can only dream about now. We're going to get expelled. And we better pray Fitzwallace isn't on the phone with the cops right now. Relax, says Aaron in an undertone. First off, we are friends. And we're not going to let anything bad happen to you. Just stick with us. Agree with everything I say and we've got this. You are delusional, I hiss. How could there be any way to explain that train wreck in the music room? When the door to the inner office opens, the knob makes a snap like a gunshot. Then Dr. Fitzwallace is upon us, his rage all the more terrible because it's ice cold. Honestly, I can't say I blame him. I'm not thrilled about being in trouble, but if any situation ever justified a principal losing it on three students, it's this one. He ushers us inside and seats himself while we stand in front of the desk. Well, it's the three of you again. I was hoping. He looks at me and shakes his head sadly. All right, let's hear it. Knowing full well it's not going to get me anywhere, I'm about to protest my innocence when Aaron speaks up. I know it looks bad, but we didn't do anything wrong. Bear and I were walking past the band room and saw smoke coming out from under the door, so we grabbed fire extinguishers and ran inside, spraying. They were shooting some kind of video, and they had a million lights plugged in. Something must have shorted out and caused a fire. Chase heard the yelling and came in to help us, but the video kids attacked us because their project was getting ruined, and somehow Joel Weber got hit his head on one of the extinguishers. The principal frowns. That's not how the students on the scene described it. Bear shakes his head understandingly. Don't be too hard on them, Dr. Fitzwallace. They were probably just scared of getting in trouble for starting the fire. The frown deepens. None of my teachers smelled smoke. Aaron sighs with relief. Good, we caught it in time. Dr. Fitzwallace shifts his gaze from the two of them to me. And that's what happened? This is it? Time for me to shoot down Aaron's ridiculous lie and speak up for my own innocence. Sure, Dr. Fitzwallace will never believe I was framed, but at least I'll have the satisfaction of throwing those two guys under the bus, even if I have to go with them. Well, the principal prompts. To my astonishment, the anger is completely gone from his expression. He's waiting for my answer, and I think I know what he's hoping to hear. He's rooting for me to go along with Aaron and Bear. Why would a principal want to let three delinquents like us off the hook after such a huge incident? I take an educated guess. It's probably a major hassle to come down hard on students the way he'd have to throw the book at Aaron and Bear and me. Three sets of unhappy parents, triple the paperwork, school board meetings, maybe court cases, everything in triplicate. And my eyes find the photographs on the wall, the two state championship pictures, my dad and me. Losing Bear, Aaron and Bear would be a blow to the hurricanes, and it would definitely shut down any possibility of me coming back. So I mumble. Yeah. Excuse me? It should be an easy thing to say, but each word sends up my tongue like poison. Yeah, what Aaron said is the way it happened. Fitzwallace looks almost relieved, and I know I've picked the right answer. Aaron and Bear are both smiling, although they're working hard to keep the celebration inside. They've gotten away with it, and so have I. We're not totally off the hook. We get a bit of a lecture on how we should have called for help or pulled the fire alarm before taking matters into our own hands. He tells us we need to be less impulsive and not so rough with our fellow students. Also, we're not allowed to leave on our own. He calls our parents, and they have to pick us up. As we stand in the foyer waiting for our rides, Aaron and Bear are raving about our amazing escape. 
Seriously, man, Barrett tells Aaron, I've seen tap dancing before, but that was filth, like art. Aaron nods. I was afraid Chase was going to mess it up at the end, but our boy came through. Didn't I tell you he'd have our back? I don't say anything, but inside I'm thinking, it's true. I covered for them. I saw a way to save my own butt, and I took it. And in the process, I wrapped myself in their phony story and got drawn back into the old life. So this is what it was like. Make trouble, lie, repeat. Luckily, those guys are so busy congratulating themselves they don't notice I'm not adding much to the conversation. Bear gets picked up first, then Aaron. I'm just reflecting that Mom's not going to be thrilled about having to leave work early and come get me over this when the Ambrose electric truck rattles along the drive. Not Mom. Dad. He's beaming at me like I'm here to present him with a big check from the state lottery. I climb into the passenger seat. What? He reaches over and playfully punches my shoulder. Fitz Wallace told me everything, and I read between the lines. Way to go, champ. It wasn't great, Dad. He laughs. You think that's the first time I've ever gotten a call like that about you, Aaron and Bear? It's never great, but you got away with it. That's pretty great. I almost say, not really, but that wouldn't be true. I could easily be buried under a mudslide of pain right now, and I'm not. I can't regret that. What I regret is the way I got so free and clear. When I arrive at school the next morning, Ms. DeLeo is waiting for me at my locker. You found out what happened. I conclude, I'll apologize to Bridget, Joel, and Kimmy when I see them at video club. She shakes her head sadly. I'm sorry, Chase, you're not part of the club anymore. Maybe I'm stupid, but that really catches me by surprise. Nobody told you I didn't do anything wrong? Suddenly there's a bowling ball in my throat and I can't seem to clear it away. I spoke to the Webbers on the phone last night. She tells me, Joel's okay, but the family is pretty rattled considering that the injury came from you. What about Brendan? I press. He knows I'm innocent. I had a talk with him too. He's not sure about your role, but the word innocent never came up. She shoots me a penetrating gaze. And it doesn't help that you backed up the story that your two friends spun about an electrical fire. My heart sinks. She's right about that. I signed on to the lie to save my own skin, but I never thought about how that would look to the video club kids. They know there was no fire. They've all been waiting for the old me to show up, and I delivered. So they kick me out, I say. She shakes her head. That decision was mine. I'm really sorry, Chase. You were doing so well. Warrior is the best middle school project I've ever seen. I think of Shoshana. I can only imagine how mad she must be. Don't worry, Ms. DeLeo, I say, surprised at how hard it is to keep my voice steady. I'll stay away. It bugs me. But what really bugs me is how much it bugs me. What do I care what a bunch of video dweebs, if a bunch of video dweebs don't want me in their club? I bring myself up short. Video dweebs. That's what Aaron and Bear call them. As upset as I am, I'm not going to stoop low enough to use their words. I blame myself for the mess I'm in, but mostly I blame those two. Speaking of Aaron and Bear, they're acting like everything is beyond awesome between us. Funny. I found a way to give them a pass for a lot of rotten stuff, including maybe even stealing a war hero's medal. But what I can't forgive them for turns out to be something I did all by myself. I protected them because it was the way to protect myself. The cost turned out to be one video club. Plus, the way I feel every time Aaron or Bear refers to me as our boy. I start taking weird detours through the halls just to avoid running into them. My one consolation is this is a short day for me. Dad's picking me up at 11 and taking me to my appointment with Dr. Wynn, the sports medicine specialist. At least that spares me lunch at the football table. I won't be eating with the video crowd anytime soon. Is it possible to lose your appetite for an entire school year? I spot Brendan a couple of times, but when he sees me, he quickly turns away. I catch a glimpse of Shoshana scorching me with a look that would melt titanium. I don't think Joel's even at school. Dr. Wynn re-enters the exam room and beams at me. Well, young man, I've got good news and better news. The good news is you exhibit no lingering concussion symptoms and you're fit as a fiddle in every way. The better news is I'm signing the medical form authorizing you to return to the football team with no restrictions. Congratulations. Gee, what a surprise. Dad searched and searched and found a doctor who would clear a dead man to go out there and get tackled and only 60 miles away. As we drive home in the Stang, Dad rails against brain-dead Cooperman, who kept me off the gridiron for no real reason. Dr. Cooperman has a diploma from Harvard Medical School in his office. I tell him, I didn't see a diploma on Dr. Wynn's wall. 
dad snorts into the wheel. Just because he isn't one of those Ivy League snobs doesn't mean he isn't as legit as they come. This is great news, champ. You're back on the team. His brow darkens. And maybe those stumble bums will start winning again once you're out there. In three weeks, I remind him. School rules. One week of non-contact practice and two weeks in full pads before I can play in a real game. Just in time for a late season playoff run, Dad chortles. I'm not that happy about my triumphant return to football, and it isn't only because of Dr. Wynn, who would have signed a paper certifying I was pregnant with triplets if my father had paid him enough. It's not the medical part that bothers me. I know I'm fine. Dr. Cooperman pretty much said so himself. I'm even interested in the game and excited to see if I can be as good as everybody says I used to be. The part I don't like is that the football me is the old me, and I don't want to be that guy anymore. Look how fast my pre-amnesia instincts kicked in the minute Aaron and Bear jammed me up yesterday. But really, what choice do I have except the Hurricanes? I'm kicked out of video club, and I lost every one of the friends I made there. Things are finally turning around for you, champ, my father goes on. But maybe not the way I want them to, I complain. Why? Because a bunch of sissies are ticked off at you? He doesn't understand why the video club thing hurts so much. I'm not sure I understand it myself. It isn't just the kids. Ms. Delia was the one who kicked me out. Teachers, Dad snorts, they have to slap you on the wrist to make it look like they're in charge. You'll notice you're not banned from the football team, and neither are your buddies Aaron and Bear. When I played, I had the whole faculty wrapped around my little finger. Sure, they threw me a detention every now and then to make it look good, but after the state championship, I called the shots in that school. For the first time, I say it out loud. Aaron and Bear might not be my buddies anymore. Oh, come on, champ, don't be that way, he beams at me. First that mess with the Weber kid, then the accident. It feels like it took forever to get the old chase back. Don't tell your mother, but I'm proud of the way you handled Jill. You made your statement, that's for sure. I don't bother to point out that I wasn't making a statement with Joel. It looks more like my buddies Aaron and Bear were making a statement with me, and all it took was a sick imagination and a lot of fire extinguisher foam. By the time we get back to Hiawassee, it's 2.30. No sense bothering to go to school. Dad drops me off at home, making me promise to report to football practice with my newly signed medical form promptly at 4. And I will, not because I want to, but because I'm too depressed to resist. Unhappiness sucks all the energy out of a guy. Upstairs in my room, I gaze out the window at the shingles of the sloping roof. For a weird instant, I actually remember sitting out there when I wanted to be alone with my thoughts. Or maybe it's not a memory at all, but something I'm imagining because I've been told so many times that's what I used to do. On a wild impulse, I raise the window and swing a leg over the sash. Carefully. Really carefully. I crawl out there. I'm expected to be terrified after what happened. Actually, though, I'm pretty comfortable on the gently sloping shingles. It even feels familiar. It's not a flashback exactly. Still, it has to come from my lost past. I definitely haven't been here lately. I swore to mom that I'd never go out on the roof again. But she's at work now. And never is a long time. To my amazement, my body arranges itself into the position that I'm told I used to prefer. Butt planted, knees bent, feet flat on the shingles. It's a different kind of memory. Muscle memory. Amnesia can't touch it. I understand why I liked it up here. It's peaceful and private. The town is all around me, but I'm above it, so nothing can reach me. I see the school and the football field I'll be on in a couple of hours. Not far away, toward downtown, is the Portland Street residence, where Mr. Solway lives. And there's a park where we filmed Leaf Man. Just the thought of it brings the bowling ball back to my throat. That's the last time I'm ever going to get to work on one of Brendan's crazy videos. Dad says the old chase is back. I wanted that once, but right now, the new chase is the life I'd rather have, and I've lost that, too.'